Okay guys, uh, welcome to video two for this week's uh, work on circular motion. Um, hopefully you've had a look at the other video and found it endlessly entertaining. Um, we're going to finish it off, this is going to be a, a slightly shorter video. Um, but we'll just go through really the, the kind of the last of the PowerPoint, talk about angular acceleration and tie up the circular motion. Um, after we've done that, I'll set you some questions you can have a go at. Hopefully you're working through your tutorial problems as well though. So let's have a, a little look at how far we got then. So this is where we were last time. We were looking at the tangential speed of somebody on planet Earth. We were talking about angular displacement being the number of radians through which uh, a rotating object had rotated. We spoke about angular velocity as being the number of radians per second. Um, so that helped explain the speed of rotation of an object and then uh, we spoke about the tangential speed as being the actual linear velocity that something was moving at a, at a, a point while it's rotating. So let's kind of finish that off then. So let's have a look. The next thing we need to look at, you might be massively surprised to hear after looking at displacement velocity is angular acceleration. Now we spoke in the last video about having one side of your head as being National 5 physics and the other side has been advanced higher. Um, so one part of your head is saying well acceleration is just the change in speed divided by the time taken or the change in velocity divided by the time taken and the same holds absolutely true for angular acceleration. We use the Greek letter alpha to denote angular acceleration. Um, so that's the one that looks like a little bit like a fish on the left here, there. Um, and then we've got a slightly strange notation, but it's straightforward, you just need to know it. Omega we define as the final velocity, and omega naught is the initial velocity. Okay, so this is very common in physics, so those of you going on to study physics or engineering will see notation like this extensively rather than having different symbols like when we're looking at linear velocity we might have used u and v, but omega and omega naught will suffice for us, it's a bit more uh, grown up. Um, time still remains as t, as t, and as always we need to be able to link um, linear acceleration a to angular acceleration alpha, and guess what? You just multiply it by the radius at which the object is rotating. Nice and easy. Um, all this so far, all the formulas have been quite easy, but the problems come when you're actually doing the problems and bringing it all together. So your head might be swimming with lots of different formulas and conversion factors just now, but what we can kind of do is introduce the rotational equations of motion and hopefully it's going to seem blindingly simple at this point. So we have split the page in the same way as hopefully you've split your head. You've got a higher physics on the left. So you should recognize on the left hand side of the table the higher equations of motion. So um, here v equals u plus at, s equals ut plus a half at squared v squared equals u squared plus 2as, whoops. At the bottom here, um, whoops, particularly those of you who had me, um, I, I don't know if I covered this one properly, is the unofficial equation of motion. So if you've not seen this one before, just take a, a wee second and have a look. It's really obvious once you look at the formula where it's telling you, because v plus u divided by two is the average speed. v plus u over t, two is the average speed. Multiplying that by time, you're multiplying the average speed of a journey through the time taken, so that will give you the displacement. Um, that one doesn't tend to be on your relationship sheet. Same thing is true for angular motion though. The equations of motion are absolutely identical. So V equals U plus AT becomes omega plus omega naught plus alpha T. S equals UT plus a half AT squared becomes theta equals omega naught T plus a half alpha t squared. v squared equals u squared plus 2as becomes omega squared plus omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. Now, I'll be honest with you, I can, I can never actually remember the angular equations of motion, so I always start with the linear ones to convert, um, in my own head at least, and that helps me get there as quickly as possible. It's exactly the same formula, so omega is our final angular velocity, so that goes in the same place as v, Omega naught is our initial 
angle velocity, so that goes in the same place as u. Alpha and a you can swap out. Theta is angular displacement and s is linear displacement, so they go in the same place. Exactly the same. So we started off this unit by saying basically you've done it all already, and it's true, you absolutely have. And that theme is actually going to continue because we're not done with circular motion yet. You might not be surprised to hear, we're going to look at dynamics after this. So we'll tie this together with a, an example. Um, so we've got a disc and the disc is mounted on an axle and around the axle we've got a little pulley wheel and we've got some basically some string wrapped around it and essentially somebody pulls the string which causes the pulley wheel to rotate which causes the disc to rotate because the the pulley wheel and the disc are, are attached so they have to have the same angular velocity sorry angular um the yeah, angular velocity at all times okay and then they're using a computer to measure the angular velocity of the disc okay so our questions are fairly simple we've got a fair amount of data there um, as the cord is pulled it accelerates from rest to 25 radians per second in six seconds calculate the angular acceleration well what I'm going to do oops I'm going to go to that I want to go to that I'm going to actually write it at the same time now because I found in the last video oops that's me drop my calculator I found in the last video that I couldn't really identify the bits on the video I was talking about at the time so part A calculate the angular acceleration right well when we were in higher we might have done this Dr. Suva. So we can actually do the same thing. No, omega alpha t. Now, Suva had a nice ring to it. Uh, theta omega naught omega alpha t doesn't really have the same ring to it, but we can do exactly the same approach. We don't have the angular displacement. We know it starts from rest, so it's zero, and we know it accelerates to 25 radians per second. We want the angular acceleration, and the time taken was six seconds. Now, at this point, I'd be very tempted to go back to my um, equations of motion. So let's just have that there. So which one is going to give me what I need? So I'm looking for alpha, and I have omega naught, omega, and t. Well, the first one that's jumping out at me is the one at the bottom, the kind of the unofficial one. Theta equals a half omega plus omega naught t. So I'm going to use that one. Um, oops, six seconds, there we go. So I'm going to do theta equals a half omega plus omega naught t. Why am I doing that? What am I doing? I should be going for this one. Everybody's having a bad day. I've only had one coffee today. Can you believe I did that? That's embarrassing. Okay, um, I'm not looking for theta, I'm looking for alpha. So, alpha equals omega minus omega naught t. So, it equals 25 minus 0 over 6. And that therefore equals doo, 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 4.2. Now, units. What do we reckon the units are of alpha are? We didn't really discuss that, did we? Well, linear acceleration is meters per second to the minus 2. Funnily enough, angular acceleration is radians per second to the minus 2. Excellent. B, part B, was calculate the length of string unwound from the pulley. Now, at this point, um, you may be looking at the PowerPoint and noticing the answers are here. <laughs> this one's wrong. So let's have a look at it. Um, before I go back to do my working, I'll point out that um, the length of string is wrapped around this pulley wheel. This pulley wheel has a radius of 7.5 millimeters. 
So the pulley wheel has the same angular acceleration as the disc, um, but it has a smaller radius. So we have to fa factor that in when we're looking at our um, length of string. So I can do the same again. I can write down theta, omega naught, omega alpha t. Now I don't have theta, but I know omega naught zero, 25. I've calculated alpha now. So that's 4.2 and it takes six seconds. And this of course is where I choose to use theta equals a half omega plus omega naught t. I'm sure there's many different ways you can do this one. Now that equals, after plugging the numbers in, 75 radians. However, we're looking for the length of string. That is the number of radians through which the pulley has rotated. So at this point, I need to do S, the linear displacement of a point on the pulley wheel. So if I consider a point on the surface of the pulley wheel, then the total linear distance that point travels is equal to the amount of string that has been unwound. So S equals R theta is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the minus three uh, times 75 radians, because it's moved through 70, uh, 75 radians, and that is equal to 0 0.6 meters. Okay, so that's our length of string. Very, very different to the 75 meters in the uh, answer on the PowerPoint. Um, but it seems a lot more believable to me, I have to be honest with you. I think just uh, the answer on the PowerPoint was 75 metres. I think there's just a bit of confusion crept in there. Okay, C, part C now. Part C was calculate the final, final tangential speed of the point on the rim of the disc. Okay, well, going back to the image, now we're looking at the disc this time. The disc is 290 millimeters in radius. So a point on the surface of the disc is 290 millimeters from the axis of rotation. Okay. Um, so if we're looking for that, then V equals R omega. Well, R, I think I've left my batteries at school as well. 290 times 10 to minus three, so it's 290 millimeters, uh, times 10 to minus three convert into uh, meters, of course. Um, omega, uh, the final angular velocity is 25 radians per second, if you recall. And that gives us 7.25 meters per second. Okay, great. So at this point, um, we should be attempting to put what we've done into action. Now, you can well imagine that when it comes around to assessment, there are lots of opportunities to assess the equations of motion in angular motion, as you will be familiar with assessment from our dynamic use in uh, our dynamic, dynamic universe in higher. So you should have lots of practice at applying these and make sure you can, because obviously once we're into assessment, then we're into complicating the questions a little bit to make them harder and having you calculate the radiuses that things are moving at um, in order to be able to just apply the equations. We're advanced higher now. We're not just gonna get the numbers we need for the equations that we can just plug in and go. So make sure you're uh, really slick with these um, because I will find a way to assess you. All right, guys, uh, that's us. Thanks very much again. Uh, hope you have a good day and uh, I'll speak to you soon.